There is absolutely zero evidence that saying you lie to the President of the United States has anything to do with race whatsoever. And it is a disgusting smear for anybody to suggest that. I, it's, a, it's a sort of a sad day when we get to the point where a columnist in the New York Times can just imagine that somebody is saying something, literally putting words in her mouth. And she prefaced the statements by saying, fair or not, I, I heard him say you lie, boy. Well, you know what? That's not fair. You can't, as a journalist, you can't just imagine people saying things. You have to criticize them based on what they actually say. And he didn't say this. I agree with Charles that he was out of line. You shouldn't, he shouldn't have yelled at the president from the floor. Uh, it was inappropriate. He apologized. There was a time right after it happened that both the White House and Nancy Pelosi wanted to just move on. That time apparently has passed because I think they believe there's political advantage to making this a bigger deal. I'm not sure it works. I think this could very well backfire because I think the vast majority of people who disagree with the president disagree with him because they disagree strongly with his policies, but they do so with goodwill. You know, the, uh, the accusation of racism is a sign of desperation by people who know they are losing the national debate and they want to hurl the ultimate charge in American politics. This is dealing from the bottom of the deck, and I uh, agree that it is a disgusting tactic. It's done as a way to end debate. The minute you call somebody a racist, the debate is over. You don't continue. I mean, the accusations of racism are the last the refuge of the liberal scoundrel. As for Maureen Dowd, imagining a word that wasn't said, well, in my previous profession, I saw a lot of people who also heard words that weren't said. They were called patients, and many of them were actually helped with medication. The reason that she won't be, and others who are hurling the accusation, is because it's a deliberate attempt to change the subject and discredit the opposition with an unprovable and unproven well, let me just say one, ad hominem. One. Well, racism and the accusations of it are the subject of tonight's commentary by senior political analyst Britt Hume. Good evening, Britt. Hi, Britt. One of the great achievements of the American civil rights movement is a broad and deep consensus that racism, which has a long history in this country, is unacceptable, indeed even intolerable. Civil rights activists led by Dr. King appealed to the conscience and goodwill of this nation on the issue and won the nation over. Today in America, one of the worst things that can be said of anyone is that he or she is racist. The charge is so potent that some, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton come to mind, have hurled it about with abandon, knowing how far people will go to avoid the label. But the accusation should be wielded with the most extreme care, supported by abundant evidence. Which brings us to the case of Joe Wilson, the backbench Republican congressman who, as we all know, called Barack Obama a liar to his face in the House chamber last week. He apologized, as we know, and he should have, and it wouldn't have hurt him to do it again. But now he stands accused of, you guessed it, racism. We heard from Democratic Congressman Johnson with his talk of people donning white hoods encouraged by Wilson. That's one example. The noted New York Times columnist that we spoke, heard about earlier said over the weekend that Wilson could not accept that a black man is president. She said she heard Wilson use the word boy in his outburst, so she admits he did not actually say that. That, it seems, is her evidence. Some people have wondered if President Obama would play the race card to answer his critics. He has not, but it is being done for him. Brett. So does this work? What does this do to debate when it's thrown out there? Well, I think over time it cheapens the charge. And I think that in this instance, uh, with all that we've heard and the instances cited in James Rosen's report, this is going to infuriate the people of goodwill who are resisting President Obama, uh, not in any way because of his race, but because of his policies. And my guess is that it has real backfire potential, which diminishes the consensus to some extent on race in America. country that elected Barack Obama and the country that gave him a 70% plus approval rating on January the 20th is now a country that's filled with bigots and racists now that his approval rating's 50 percent. Well. Has nothing to do with the fact that some of us believe he has darted way too left, has been way too unfocused. Now, if you don't love President Obama, um, more and more people on the left are racist. Jimmy Carter said it. Martin yeah. Dowd said it this past weekend. It is, what do they say? Let me bring in Mike Barnacle. Mike, it's, I, I guess patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel. Is Could could we add to that that playing the race card is the, the, uh, the, 
the last uh, the refuge of the truly desperate. I'm, I'm serious. Saying that everybody's racist and looking into Joe Wilson's mind and say, oh, we can only say that because he's from the South, and if you get angry at the president, you're a bigot. You know, uh, Jimmy Carter's been inside a bubble since uh, the winter of 1976. I've got to say, as somebody who's said throughout his entire public career that re racism does exist, I don't know what America Jimmy Carter lives in, because he doesn't live in the America where I live. And again, this is an America where whether I was, you know, I went to the University of Alabama, I saw it some there. But for the most part, I didn't, despite the fact that I got involved in race issues at the University of Alabama in a very aggressive, high-profile way. Uh, the same thing with Congress. Yes, are there racists? Are there bigots? Yes. But for a former president to suggest that Barack Obama's approval ratings drop to 50 percent and people are angry with him because he's a black man, that's just not the truth. Again, it... it there's desperation out there on the hard left, and they just can't figure out why people in the middle of America are upset at this guy. Well, we have to get to more top stories now, but later we'll talk about this. I actually worry about the fact that he brought this up. I really do on a number of levels. Well, he's not alone. Again, Maureen Dowd brought it up. A lot of people on the hard left have brought this up because they can't get past the fact that I, Barack Obama, I, I like that Bill math. Clinton, get couldn't get health care reform passed because 75% of just, America are not racists. 75% of Americans like their health care. It may not just be wrong, Joe. It may be irresponsible. It we'll is reckless.